Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing iron basics. Now, we have already talked about the introduction to anemias and microcytic anemias, and in the next lecture, we're going to be discussing iron deficiency anemia specifically. So I highly recommend you guys go watch our previous videos. You can find them on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine. And there you can find a Hemonk playlist with all the videos you need. Now, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, your support really means a lot to us because we want to post every single day for you guys. So let's start talking about iron. Iron is one of the most important molecules in our body, mainly because it is required for heme synthesis. It allows protoporphyrin to become heme by binding to protoporphyrin. This is a molecule of protoporphyrin and when iron binds into the middle right next to all four or right binds to these all four nitrogenous uh, groups right here you're gonna have heme so this is no longer protoporphyrin this is heme and then four heme molecules will bind to four globin uh, chains and you'll get hemoglobin now this is mainly iron is mainly absorbed in the gut via the gut macrophages and we're going to talk about iron absorption in a little bit and it is found in the body and is found in uh, the food that we eat in two main forms so we have heme iron which is found in meat it is readily and easily absorbed in the gut and then you have non heme iron this is found in the fe2 plus state similar to this molecule right here that is bound to uh, the protoporphyrin and it's aided by vitamin c now, iron is always bound in the blood to a protein, and there are several proteins you need to know for step one, like transferrin and ferritin. And uh, with that being said, let's talk first about iron absorption. So iron is going to be absorbed in the gut and is specifically absorbed in the duodenum. That's pretty important to understand. It just ties back into your GI gastroenterology lectures that you need to know about. So definitely understand that iron gets absorbed in the duodenum via a transporter, and that transporter is called the DMT1 transporter. So the DMT1 transporter is going to be found on enterocytes, and it transports both heme and non-heme irons okay that's a good thing about it it's non-selective it can transport both types of heme now heme iron like we said is more readily absorbed and it's easier for our body to absorb it now once it transports uh, um, when it's trying to transport iron into the our bloodstream we have a transport protein called ferroportin Ferroportin is going to bind to iron and it's going to help iron transport across the membranes into our blood. And then once it gets into our blood, it's going to bind to a protein called transferrin. Transferrin is going to transport the iron to the liver and the bone marrow. And that's the main places where it's going to be stored in the liver and bone marrow macrophages where it can be used to produce heme and then so on to produce hemoglobin. Now, uh, this is once it gets inside the bone marrow macrophages and liver macrophages, it's going to be stored via being bound to ferritin. Now, you may be asking, why is iron being bound to so many uh, proteins throughout every step of the way? Well, the reason why is because iron has the capacity to generate free radicals. So in order to prevent free, free radical formation, we're going to bind it to these proteins. So the way I like to remember it is that you have... Iron. Let's say you have the gut right here. All right, let's just draw it out for you guys. So this is our gut, right? And this is like if we just look at an inside view of our gut. Boom. Okay, so this is our gut. And here is a molecule of iron. It's going to be floating around and it's going to go down. And then right next to our gut, let's say we have this uh, blood vessel right here. Okay, so what ends up happening, and this is how I remember all of these transporters and uh, sorry, all of these proteins, is that iron is going to be floating through our gut. And when it gets to our gut, it gets to a sort of channel, okay, which is this channel right here. And this is going to be the DMT1 transporter, right, which is going to uh, transport it into the enterocytes. But I like to simplify it. What ends up happening is that iron is going to be bound to uh, ferroportin. So I like to think about this being a port, 
okay so a port right for iron to go to to cross into our bloodstream so that stands for ferroportin all right this is ferroportin and once it crosses into our bloodstream we're going to have another another uh, uh, molecule called transferrin okay and this is this molecule right here it's going to bind to iron to make this iron transferrin molecule and it's going to transfer iron in the blood right so that's why it's called transferrin okay and once it gets to uh, the bone marrows okay at the bone marrow and the liver it's going to be stored intracellularly in a iron tin okay so this is an iron tin that stands for ferritin boom so fe2 plus is going to then go in here and it's going to be stored as uh, as it's going to be sort of within with ferritin that's how i like to think about it i made it into a story so hopefully this made it easier for you guys to remember what is happening so like we said there are also these proteins you need to know for step one this is very important because they play a huge role in iron transport and regulation so the first transport is transferrin which is going to help transport protein in the blood so sorry it's an iron transport protein in the blood it's going to help transport iron from uh, the blood to the liver and bone marrow macrophages. Then you have ferritin. Ferritin is gonna be the intracellular storage protein, okay, for iron. That's what's happening in the liver and bone marrow macrophages. You have ferroportin, which is, like I said, the port for iron. So it's going to help uh, iron go into our blood. It's going to help iron be absorbed into our GI tract. And it's the only known GI uh, iron. And the main iron protein that we haven't talked about yet is called hepcidin. And this is very important. Hepcidin is uh, kind of, in my opinion, an antagonist to... Uh, uh, the iron proteins in general. So this is going to be very high yield because hepcidin gets tested quite often, especially when you're going to be preparing for step one and you're doing questions, you're going to find you're being tested on hepcidin. Hepcidin is secreted by the hepatic parenchymal cells and it is the key regulator of iron into the circulation of mammals. This is very important. This is the main, main protein that is regulating iron understand it is the regulating protein for iron now what ends up happening is that it is going to inhibit ferroportin okay it is going to inhibit ferroportin by binding to it and degrading it it's so if you have ferroportin now remember ferroportin helps iron uh, go into our blood it helps with absorption of iron in the GI tract well hepcidin is going to block ferroportin okay so when you don't have ferroportin working properly you're not going to be able to absorb proper uh um you're not going to be able to absorb iron properly and that is in that is useful because hepcidin can function as a antibacterial agent in our body it lowers the availability of iron stores and that harms bacteria because bacteria need iron to function so that is why you have hepcidin. Again, this is very high yield. Don't forget about hepcidin. Everything else is pretty straightforward, but hepcidin is very, very important. Now, finally, as far as iron in our body is concerned, you also need to know what the iron measurements mean. So you have several uh, measurements in our body of iron, and iron is usually measured by cerium iron levels, right? which means you're going to be looking at how much iron is in the serum. You're going to look at the total iron binding capacity, a.k.a. TIBC. This is pretty much the measurement of transferrin that's out there. But remember, transferrin is used to transport iron into our liver and our bone marrow. So TIBC is going to tell you how much transferrin proteins are in your blood. Essentially, that's what's happening. That means that's the total iron binding capacity. 
And then you can look at the percent saturation. What percentage of the transferrin uh, proteins are saturated with iron? And then finally, you have serum ferritin. Now, all together, this is going to give you a good picture of what's happening in our blood with our iron stores. So now we're going to talk about two main pathologic conditions associated with iron. The first one is called hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is a disease in which we have excess iron absorption in our GI tract and deposition but in all parts of the body, not just in the liver and uh, the, uh, the bone marrow macrophages, but in all parts of the body. And that's very important because these are some key giveaways for you when it comes to step one. Now, when it comes to iron, it is dangerous, like we said, because it is going to generate free radicals, toxic free radicals. And by generating toxic free radicals, you're going to get the symptoms that we have associated with hemochromatosis, which are liver cirrhosis. That makes sense because uh, iron gets stored in the liver. And then you also have decreased libido, amenorrhea in females, and uh, decreased libido in both males and females. You can have arthritis occur. And uh, one of the key giveaways in the physical exam is going to be mental status changes usually it's going to occur in a patient with with very acute presentation or, sorry a very uh, slow progression of mental status changes that are happening so keep that in mind mental status changes is pretty important now the key giveaways on the physical exam the key giveaways are going to tell you uh, uh, what is happening it'll let you know that this is hemochromatosis so in the physical exam the first thing you will see is darkening of the skin and it used to be called bronze diabetes. Hemochromatosis used to be called bronze diabetes because the skin would darken. This is all due to iron depositing in the skin. The other thing you definitely need to know is the Fleischer ring. So Fleischer rings are this ring right here that you can see in the cornea. And uh, it is a deposition of iron occurring in the eye. That is what's happening. Now, these three uh, presenta presenting symptoms uh, are going to tell you exactly what is happening. They are going to clue you into hemochromatosis. First, you have mental status changes. Then you're going to have darkening of the skin, aka bronze diabetes. And then you're going to have the Fleischer rings. B with all three of these symptoms, you should know that you are dealing with a uh, absorption uh, disease of absorption and deposition of iron, excess absorption and deposition. So that is hemochromatosis. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is going to be iron poisoning. So iron poisoning is a highly dangerous condition that usually affects kids more so than it does uh, adults. And the reason why is because a child might, accident, might uh, ingest their parents' iron tablets by accident. And because of ingesting these iron tablets, they're going to be in an iron overloaded state. And that's going to lead to cell death due to free radical formation. We already talked about that. Now, the symptoms for this are going to be very nonspecific, like nausea, vomiting, GI bleed, lethargy, and uh, GI obstruction. And when it comes to step one, you're going to be able to know it's iron poisoning because they're probably going to tell you that they ate their, patient, uh, their parents' uh, tablets for iron in one way or another. Now, when it comes to treating these, uh, uh, this condition, you can use an IV drug known as deferoxamine, or you can use an oral drug known as deferacerox. Okay, these are going to be the two main drugs and dialysis to help remove the amount of iron you have in your body. So that is iron poisoning in a nutshell. And with that being said, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you guys like what we are doing. You can follow us on our social media accounts at mad.medicine on Instagram and at it's mad medicine on Twitter. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search mad medicine and you'll find us.